Hello, I am Adam and welcome to the Vintage Sanctuary. As you might know, I'm a fan of those uh, Yankee contributors, players who over the years contributed to uh, the Yankees dynasty. And so we are going to look at another uh, player today. And let me go ahead and turn the camera around and show you the card of the featured player. Let's talk about Jerry Coleman. He was the only Major League Baseball player to see conflict in both World War II and Korea. Coleman was a Marine pilot with 57 dive, dive bomber missions in World War II and 63 fighter pilot missions in Korea, being awarded two distinguished flying crosses among many other medals. Coleman once said the proudest day of his life was April 1, 1944, when he earned his pilot's wings. Jerry's service to his country alone is more than sufficient for me to honor him by seeking out one of his cards for my collection. I was kind of choosing between his 1950 Bowman, which I think is just a gorgeous card, and his 1952 Topps card. Well, as you can see, I went with the 1952 Topps card, so let's take a closer look. I got this card in January of 2021. It's a uh, PSA 4. And to me, this card just screams vintage art. I mean, the color, wow. <laughs> I think it's so beautiful. I mean, this is a card that, that definitely deserves uh, to be in a vintage sanctuary for sure. Wow. Uh, just beautiful card, beautiful for the grade. It's got a nice clean back, really nice looking card, nicely centered. Notice up there in the upper right, there's like these uh, parallel ridges. They're, those are from the factory. Somehow, I guess the cardstock got crinkled during the printing or was already crinkled before the printing. But you know, that doesn't bother me a bit. I actually think it looks kind of cool. So I think it adds some character. Without that uh, factory um, cardboard parallel crinkling there, maybe this bumps up a grade. I don't know, but it's just such a gorgeous card. I paid the equivalent of about four gallons of gasoline, the price of about four gallons of gasoline for this card, which which I thought was, you know, not much at all. However, uh, with inflation these days and how, you know, how much the cost of fuel has went up, uh, maybe talking about the cost of this card in terms of gallons of gasoline <laughs> causes people to pause, have some pause about whether or not they'd want to pick one up. Coleman was born in 1924 in California. His father was an abusive alcoholic. Jerry was around eight years old when his mother Pearl left her husband, taking her children, Jerry, and his sister Rosemary with her. As a result, Jerry's father shot Pearl multiple times, putting her in the hospital for about nine months and leaving her with permanent injuries. Her husband was never prosecuted. Because of the injuries, Pearl was unable to go to work and had to go on welfare. Amazingly, she actually remarried her ex-husband a few years later so that he would so that he would provide for the family. During World War II, Coleman had forced himself to smoke in order to fit in. By the way, I'm not going to smoke, force myself to smoke or drink in order to fit in on YouTube, but I'm happy to connect with people who do smoke or drink. Uh Later, one of his minor league coaches told him that smoking was sapping his strength. Coleman was nowhere near a power hitter to begin with, so he quit smoking immediately and never smoked again. Coleman played for the Yankees between 1949 and 1957, mostly as a second baseman, missing parts of the 52 and 53 seasons due to the Korean War. The Yankees' very last game of the 49 season was against the Red Sox, with the pennant and a trip to the World Series on the line. With the Yankees leading 2-0 and the bases loaded, Coleman hit a double, batting in three runs and giving the Yankees a 5-0 lead. The Red Sox ultimately batted in three runs, making the final score 5-3. Without Coleman's three RBIs, the Yankees may have lost 2-3, missing out on the 1949 World Series and the opportunity to win five World Series in a row from 1949 to 1953, a record that may never be broken. Coleman's best year was 1950, his only year as an All-Star. 
In the 1950 World Series, the Yankees swept the Philadelphia Phillies in a low-scoring affair. The Yankees only batted in 11 runs for the entire series, but Coleman was responsible for three of those runs, including two game winners. In Game 1, Coleman batted in the only Yankee run that led to a 1-0 Yankee victory. The Yankees won Game 2 by a score of 2-1, with one of those two Yankee runs scored by Coleman. In Game 3, in the bottom of the ninth inning with the score knotted at 2-2, Coleman hit a walk-off single to center field that batted in Gene Woodling for the win. In the 3-2 Yankee victory, Jerry had two RBIs and one run, thus contributing to all three critical Yankee runs. All of this, together with his brilliant defense, led to Coleman winning the 1950 Babe Ruth Award, which was the precursor to the World Series MVP Award that started in 1955. Manager Casey Stengel once called Coleman the best player he had ever seen at making double plays. It is quite possible the Yankees would never have won their second of five consecutive World Series victories in 1950 without Jerry Coleman. Let me just pause to say, wow, doesn't this card just scream vintage art? I mean, isn't it just glowing? Is it is it stalking you? Are you searching for it on eBay while you watch this video? Wow. And this is a pretty bud budget-friendly uh, card, too. After his playing days, well, let me just say, pretty budget-friendly, of course, if you're patient. And you could go with a, a uh, raw one or even getting a nice-looking low-grade vintage if you're patient. Uh, this doesn't have to cost much money. After his playing days, Coleman spent a whopping 51 years in broadcasting, calling 42 Major League Baseball seasons, including 33 in a row for the San Diego Padres. During his Hall of Fame broadcasting career, Coleman became very popular in San Diego and was known as the Colonel because he had retired from the Marines as a Lieutenant Colonel. No doubt part of his popularity was due to his broadcasting flubs that became known as Colemanisms, like the time he announced, Winfield goes back to the wall he hits his head on the wall and it rolls off. It's rolling all the way back to second base. This is a terrible thing for the Padres. Of course, Coleman later admitted that he meant the ball, not Winfield's head, was rolling all the way back to second base. As I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in adding a Jerry Coleman card to your collection, there are several budget-friendly options. In my humble opinion, his 52 tops and 50 Bowman are his best looking cards. Before we close with some card meditation, thank you for watching and I welcome your comments below. I hope you had a wonderful and peaceful time in the Vintage Sanctuary.